Fabio Pessoa Núñez. Fabio Pessoa Núñez. Fabio is a network and system supervisor in NECBR. He's going to talk about analysis of the IXPs using time series database. Hello, everybody. My name is Fabio. I work, I belong to the team of uh, IXBR, and I've come here to talk about uh, the analysis of the boom traffic of an IXP that using open search that can help us solve the problems faster in the network. What is the boom traffic? Boom. BOM means broadcast, unknown, unicast, and multicast. So these are frames that are essential for the operation of a layer 2 network. And in general, it, they are sent to almost all the ports of a, a layer 2 network. So, and the, uh, not all the frames in a network are necessary um, or essential for we see cases, for instance, of a misconfiguration of the routers, of participants that uh, generate uh, frames of these types, and each of them will reach the entire network, all the IXP participants as a protocol for a discovery of a neighborhood, as a IGMP and and IGMP and OSPF and even in cases where um, the unicast is being sent to the network with a MAC address of destination of the frameworks that are not present in the IXP, but there a pro for some problem the that traffic is sent to the destination network in the network of an IXP. In most cases, these frames are necessary to operate the layer two network, ARP and NDP neighbor solicitation in IPv6. It is not possible to establish communication between the participants without the legitimate traffic uh, from ARP and NDP. This, however, there are some examples where these frames are generated because of problems in the network in layer two. Uh, through a switch, uh, because of the switch, sometimes we um, um, they don't know uh, a Mac that should be known, but uh, is not uh, um, was not recorded, and they start looking. So sometimes there are problems in the layer three. Let's assume that the port of an IXP participant uh, crashed. So row time BGP has not uh, crashed yet. So. In the routes of the active, the active routes of the participants, they are distributed to all the participants, and all the participants will continue to try to sow to a MAC that is no longer in the network. So, what is the motivation of this analysis? Really, it could be a. Uh, uh, um, even in ARP, much of the traffic can cause problems to other participants. So, as I said, this can be the result of problems in the infrastructure of the IXP. When we speak of there's a large tra amount of traffic present in the IXP, so it's very difficult to do an analysis based on a, a wild shark. Um, but if we do the correlations only with those tools, 
we won't have anything viable. We, you don't have the participation of the members involved in problems like this. I also need a tool to justify my participants of the problems that are happening. If I send, they sent the wrong framing, I must let them know very quickly and say, well, there's a configuration problem. This needs to be corrected as fast as possible. Now, what did I use as a tool to allow this analysis faster in real time? We start the open search. That is a tool. It's an open source tool that is used to analyze a large number of data on real time. All the data that I will store are expressed in JSON in a structure called documents. And the grouping of several of those documents, they put in collections with similar characteristics, and we call them indexes. indexes. So we look for things with the same characteristics. Open search has uh, allows me to do storage of the data and also to search for information anytime. It in an it has an ecosystem around it that makes it possible to do the entire process from the moment the data is obtained handling, storage, and visualization. So here, let me show you how I did the entire process to do the analysis and to keep it constant. Here we have the capture of the traffic in the network in real time. The BOMA traffic that is generated in the network is sent to all the participants, so I'm not collecting an exclusive uh, traffic. All the participants receive that, all the IXP ports, and that information is processed with different tools until, and, until it becomes available for our analysis and for potential action. The premise that we try to obtain in this workflow is that any of these tools may be delayed easily, for instance, or maybe to improve uh, scalability. That is, we can take a piece of the flow uh, workflow and the tool may continue to work. Here, let me show you step by step how each of the stages uh, happens. The first uh, stage, we have the in the environment IXP MLPA that we have the traffic. We use the T shark for capturing the traffic, uh, the uh, the frames, as if it were a wild shark. The T shark writes that uh, the data in a JSON. Uh, text file, but only w with the frame's headers. Why do I want to analyze the network? So after writing this in the, the file, I use the file beat to analyze the text uh, file and uh, uh, saving new entries. So I see that there's a new interest in the file text and the text file, and it is then used for processing and analysis. So the next stage would be to take the data, to analyze it, and we enrich the data for further analysis. So in the first part, then we sent the data through Redis that allows us, if there is, for instance, uh, if there is a, a flood of frames in the network and I can't, uh, I can um, support them and I don't lose any data, it, it acts as a buffer. Then I, it sends it to the log stash that is another in the ecosystem of the eco, uh, of open search, and really, then it starts 
doing a more in-depth analysis of the frames that I'm capturing. It will evaluate the fields of the frames, uh, such as the map of origin, destination, IP uh, information in IP quest, information of uh, PV6, neighbor solicitation. And with that information, I managed to compare the data against uh, my uh, database of the participants that I can enrich it. I can mark the data, the, those lines that represent the frame, I managed to say this frame comes from the participant with an ASNX that is connected to a machine X or Y, and a pop that's a specific device. And I, oh, this is a packet that could that should be received by a specific group, even being an ARP. Although if the the ARP is being broadcast, I know that a specific router in the networks should respond to that ARP. So I have many ARPs for that same destination, and for some dis reason, the destination, the router, is not answering. So this shows a problem. I can mark the packets to see what they're trying to do in the network. So, and also, it marks, I mark these frames with a type. That is, I can say of the type of packet. It's an ARP, it's an NDP, an invalid RP, uh, or for an IP that is in a network, and it doesn't make sense for it to be there. So I can, for instance, ask, what is that packet? Um, to do uh, more uh, um, uh, a narrow analysis. So after that, we store the data in the open search, and in open search, we define the period of maintenance of the data. We see whether really we need to replicate the data, not to lose it, and depending on the place of our uh, IXP, the database may be very large or very small. So we managed to do these adjustments and have the data during the time that we need. We achieve all that flexibility. Finally, after storing the data in open search, here, they're available, and from then, they'll be available for whatever you want. You can use the open search dashboard that allows me to investigate, to uh, um, build charts, uh, and to do a number of analysis. I can use my internal tools with queries in the API and analyzing what I want. That is up to the user. And so the and I can analyze this as necessary. So there there may be many API requests, um, neighbor solicitation, who I can see who is sending a lot of traffic that should be between two switches of the network. Apparently, there's a problem there, so I managed to uh, write reports and uh, uh, take action faster. In addition, I can write reports um, in the network of the IXP. I can also automate so that so as to call the participant automatically and to say, well, you are sending something in the IXP network. You shouldn't do that. So we are going to monitor it until we can correct it. So here, let me show you some of the screens. How, do, how can I see the data using open search dashboards? This is an easy way 
this is presented in a simple way. We can look for specific fields of the header that we have here that we are storing and also the data that we are enriching. For instance, if we want all the information from the frames art of the specific autonomous system, we, here we can filter considering periods even. If we want a specific period, we can see how much they are sending. You can filter it that way. Or also, we want to know the ARPs that come from a specific uh, model. And we can also get that information directly here in the dashboard of open search. So as I mentioned, the data is, an analyze, is uh, stored in a JSON format, so it's, they are very easy to analyze. In itself, it's already easy to read the data in this format that JSON presents, but you can also use it simply with an API or with an app, whatever we want. The API makes it possible to analyze the data um, uh, by external tools uh, as we need. So we can use both internal or uh, external um, uh, tools in the uh, dashboard, in the open search uh, dashboard. And here with this tool, we can uh, produce uh, charts. For instance, in a specific time, we can see all the protocols. For instance, we have a very high number of ARP or requests or queries. So we can see all of that in charts, heat, map, heat maps, for instance. Um, here in this specific case, we were receiving many requests, many neighbor uh, solicitations and R, but a little less, and there were some arms that shouldn't be there. We also have some cases of router advertisement, and we can do these charts, so this analysis. And another way we can visualize the data is what we see here. You see the flow charts. You can see who's talking to whom. So as I mentioned earlier, we have, for instance, we have an ARP and that goes to the entire network. Only one specific router should answer. In this uh, flow chart, we could generate, for instance, uh, in site A and site B, etc. I had to cover the data because it's something real. So we've observed several requests of art for a specific site or also for a device. For instance, device 10 in the network is generating many are uh, queries that should be answered by machine six or device six. So in this way, you can establish a correlation. If there is a very high increase in the flow of these two machines, we may have a problem and we can send alerts. As I said earlier, we can also do an ARP analysis and uh, ND, trying to understand why we have so many ARP requests in the network. If there are some uh, requests that are being repeated a lot in the network, there may be a problem, there may be some restriction, or even we, we are protecting the network. We can do an analysis with this data actively and to actively um, um, uh, start an action with the network participants. We may also have cases where participants that are sending uh, ARP requests for a specific destination, maybe that destination is no longer part of the network. So it's a, it may be uh, uh, somebody that may have uh, disables, uh, disabled the network. So that is the idea with these graphs. So that is what I wanted to, sh to share with you. As I mentioned earlier, this type of uh, bomb traffic is quite critical in the IXP networks. So it's a very complex analysis. We need 
these tools to facilitate the real-time verification so as to start actions before we may have more severe problems in the IXPs. It is also very important to know that to do this analysis, in this case, we must have a trustworthy source of information. We need to have a reliable database of the IXP so that we can work with this uh, enrichment of the data and to do this analysis. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Now, we invite, uh, uh, well, I'm for a bit Guatemala. That tool is perfect. Are you going to make it available for the community? Well, all, all the tools are open source, but I don't have a public description explaining how each of the steps uh, were done. But you can get in touch with us. We can exchange some ideas, and I can help you somehow to work uh, in the configuration. Thank you. It would be very useful for me to have that. Thank you. If there are no further questions, a round of applause for Fabio.